Minister, I just want to begin by saying that I'm disappointed to see that the Minister for Housing has actually left before our slot was reached here in the Rural Independent Group. Um, perhaps he's reflecting on the bad behaviour last week, I don't know, but it is disappointing to see he's not here. I want to begin by saying that I have met many people from Donegal and Mayo outside the gates of Leinster House, and to see the look of despair and anguish on their faces. And that's why I'm here today. I'm a TD in the Midlands, but I believe this is an important issue. And it's an issue that needs to be urgently resolved because it's desperately unfair on those families. And um, those families have been through turmoil. They need to see action. And you know, government needs to instill confidence that it is doing its best. And certainly to date, that confidence hasn't been instilled. Um, like, why would you leave out the foundations out of the redress scheme that you've proposed? That's incredible, incredible, but again, not surprising. Uh, the Minister for Housing has his own ideas. <clears throat> so I just want to begin by, by reading out um, parts of an email that were sent to me by a lady called Joy, an innocent homeowner. And she says, how can you let a bill go through without including foundations? Below our feet, our homes are crumbling and unable to support the walls. What is it going to take to make the government realise that a tragedy will happen? Sadly, I have no doubt that this will be a reality as families will be unable to avail of the scheme as it stands due to the shortfall between the grant and actual building costs. Our homes are destined to crumble down around us until it takes us, I hope and pray, that children are not harmed or maimed for life or worse. This is the stage we are at and this is the stage we are getting to and many homes should be condemned. As our walls are weakening, our floors are too heavy to be supported by the walls that are crumbling down around them. Where is the safest place in your opinion for me to sleep at night? I am sure you will agree that it is a tough decision to take when going to bed at night. Sleeping on the first floor, would I be safer as I would fall below when this eventually happens. Or maybe I would be safer on the ground floor of my home and take my chances that the slab will perhaps miss me as it falls down. I am sure you will agree that this is a tough call as you put your children to bed every night, haunted by the fact of what can happen and wondering if they will be safe. We have done absolutely nothing wrong, yet we are living this nightmare daily. We are stressed and ex extremely anxious to hear if we can rebuild our homes and if the science and research from world leaders in this field will be listened to. How can this research and advice from these experts be ignored? Sadly, the SCSI rates will not allow me to rebuild my home as the rates will leave a massive shortfall, approximately €60,000 plus foundations. But please, put yourself in our shoes. How would you feel if you had built a home and the government did not regulate the block manufacturers? And now we, the innocent victims of this crisis, are left to spend the rest of our days in fear of our safety or be in debt for the rest of our lives. How can this possibly be fair? If you can find a builder to build at these rates, please pass on my details, as I have yet to find a builder who comes anywhere close to the SCSI rates. And I just want to end on the note that, like, in terms of the costs, you know, it has been pointed out by Deputy Donoghue, who is an expert in this field, as he, he is a building contractor. But you, we have companies like Kingspan, and for the insulation, that, that's increasing by 15 per, or 25 per cent by the 1st of July. And, you know, these costs were not factored in, in terms of the current uh, proposal, and the costs are escalating every day. So we need a bit of common sense and cop on here. It shouldn't take three months to revise costs. That's nonsense. Gerv